1919, one year after World War I ended, Armistice Day was celebrated. This holiday honored the Americans who served in the military and protected our country. Congress made this day official in 1926. Eight years later, it became a national holiday. Two te- decades later, President Eisenhower changed the name from Armistice Day to Veterans Day. No matter what the day is called or how it is celebrated, Veterans Day is a time of people of, of our country to honor all the amazing men and women who have served in our military. We celebrate this day every year on November 11th. The Air Force is the military branch that protects the air. Veterans in the Air Force have flown planes or helicopters. The Air Force is also responsible for monitoring military satellites in space. The Air Force was created in 1947. One of the most important jobs is to rescue troops who need help on land and sea. The Air Force was initially established as a part of the Army on August 1, 1907. The USAF was formed as a separate branch of the U.S. Armed Forces on September 18, 1947. The Army is the largest branch of the U.S. military. The Army protects land, both in the U.S. and in other areas around the world, such as military bases in in other countries. The Army is the oldest of the five branches. It was formed in 1775, when our country started fighting for independence from Britain. The goal of the Army is to preserve the peace and security of our nation. The Coast Guard is the smallest branch of the military. The Coast Guard helps protect the U.S. coastline. The branch helps Homeland Security monitor water borders. They help rescue people from lakes, rivers, and oceans. In times of war, the Coast Guard becomes a part of the Navy. The Marines are one of the most elite fighting forces in the world. The Marines are a part of the are part the Marines are a part of the Department of the Navy. They will help and operate missions with the Navy. The Marines serve on Navy ships, protect naval bases, guard U.S. embassies, and provide an always ready strike force. Every person that is in the Marines has to be trained as an infantryman. The Marines are a smaller force in the Army. The Marines serve in the air, sea, and ground. What is it like to be a leader for our country? Being a leader for our country is an honor and a privilege, and it's a lot of fun. So you get to meet people, go places, and help accomplish the mission. It's rewarding also. So when you leave with a job well done, you can go home proud. How does the military protect the United States? Our military protects the United States by, by being strong and by being uh, well-respected and a, um, a, a fighting force that all other countries know if, if they make the ma- make the US mad that we have this force that's an excellent well-trained force that can react and take care of anything it needs to take care of and while I was in it was it was all peacetime it was while president clinton was president and we also did a lot of peacekeeping missions which also protect so you don't always have to be fighting to protect how was your living area and what was it like if you ask me how living conditions were as an enlisted man uh, in basic training, they weren't that good. Uh, in Vietnam, they weren't that good. We basically lived in a tent. Um, but in the States, you know, I was married, so we had quarters and houses just like regular non-service people do. How did you feel during your years of service? Serving in the Army was one of the proudest moments of my entire life. Um, there was really nothing like being able to wear a uniform each and every day and represent our country. I think the camaraderie that you get in the U.S. Army while you're serving our great nation is unlike anything else. And I'll never forget uh, the friends that I made, um, and many of which I still continue to have today. Can you describe what a normal day was like for you in the military? typical day in Iraq isn't any different than Uh, the jobs that your parents do or your families. You wake up, you get some breakfast, uh, you get ready for your day, and you do your job for that day or that night. And when you're done, you put everything away. You clean it, make sure it's ready for the next day's work, have some dinner, and maybe do some exercise or spend time with your friends before you go to bed. 
How did you deal with the fear that comes with serving us? Well, it depends on where you're at, on how much fear there is. Uh, if you are in the United States, there's not a whole lot of fear. You'd have to trust the people you work with and uh, trust in your training, and that's how you do it. A lot of it comes so fast that there's not a chance to be fearful. That would be one part of that answer. The other part is you train so well and you become so close with those people. You become extremely close because you go through uh, some bad situations together. You become bonded extremely well when you know this person on your right and this person on your left is there just like you're going to do for them, they're going to do for you. Why did you want to join the military? Why did you choose to serve? Overall, do you feel that that was a good choice or do you wish you had made other choices? I felt like I wanted to do it when I was a little boy. I always knew I wanted to. And for a lot of people, they don't feel that way. But when they do join, uh, they learn to like it, sometimes to love it. And I don't think I could have chosen any other thing for myself. But if I had to, I'd probably teach scuba diving. I love swimming underwater. What was it like having to leave your family? Oh, it's always tough when you leave the ones you, you uh, care about, so you just get, uh, you just get used to it. Uh, most of the time, my family uh, was with me, except for a short time when I was on Okinawa. Uh, they weren't there, and then obviously the two years I spent in Vietnam, the family wasn't there, so you just make good friends and don't think about it that much. What do you miss most about the service? Or do you not miss anything about the service? I actually miss being in the Army every single day. It was one of the best experiences uh, that I could have ever asked for in my professional life. If I had to pick one thing that I miss the most, it is traveling to fun and exotic countries all over the world. What job did you have after you retired from the military? One of the things I had learned in the Army was some computer skills which, because when I went to college, I didn't even need to use a computer to go to college. So I had um, learned a lot about Excel spreadsheets, and I had done a lot with um, the engine room, getting them organized, and I figured out that I was pretty good at organizing things and had these computer skills, and I ended up right into payroll, and that's what I do here at Hudson Schools now. <laughs> What was the first food you wanted to have when you came back to the United States? For me, it was a salad. Uh, getting fruits and vegetables was definitely a luxury. The first food I wanted to eat when I came back home was something that my wife would cook for me, because she's the best cook in Hudson. Uh, for me, it would be Italian food. <laughs> did you think of another job besides serving in the military? If so, what job? What job did you have after serving our country? I actually went to college and to law school, and I'm currently a lawyer. And that's what I did in the Army, too. I was a lawyer and represented soldiers and our government and all sorts of cases um, and defended our nation. Um, that's what I currently do today. After I left the Army, I currently practice as a lawyer, uh, just in a different capacity. If you could return to a country that you served in, which would it be and why? I've served in Korea, Germany, Jordan, Kuwait, Iraq, and Kosovo, and I would most like to go back to Iraq because I'd like to see how it is now, and I've made friends there, and I'd like to visit with them, Iraqi men and women, and see how they and their families are doing. How did being in the service, possibly including combat, change your perspective of daily life? It made me realize that being in the United States is such a privilege and an honor. We have the opportunity here to practice all sorts of freedoms that people in other countries don't have. What did you learn about other cultures while you were overseas? I saw that uh, war is a very, uh, it's probably the most uh, tragic thing that we do as humans. However, it's still here and we got to be on the forefront of it. I also learned that uh, we're all the same. We might look different, but guess what? We all bleed the exact same way, and we all got to put our socks and our shoes on the same way, and it doesn't matter if we're white, black, green, yellow, uh, religion, or, you know, we're, we're really all the same.